On this episode of the Cares None Beto podcast, this guy that we have on the show is an extremely funny stand-up comic. He's a social commentator. He became a stand-up NBC finalist. He also made an appearance on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. He also co-hosts the Man School 202 podcast, one of my personal favorites, and the host of his own podcast called Between Spots and all kinds of other shit. Andre D. Thompson joins the show, and we talk about what triggered his start in the comedy world, how he develops his material when it comes to comedy, and what he's no longer allowing from people who hide their racism under the umbrella of comedy. This was a great episode. It went fast as hell. He was a funny dude, a smart dude, very, very smart dude. I know you're going to enjoy this podcast, but if not, and as always, cares none. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Eric Body Beats. It's a vibe. All right. It's the Cares None Be Dope Podcast. I am your host, Chris Cares None. And I got a really special guest in the house today. Really special. You know. this, this actually means more to me than you'll ever actually know. Oh, shit. So, you was, so this guy was a stand-up comic, is a stand-up comic, a funny one. Was on the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Yeah. Was a finalist for stand-up NBC. Did all kind of stuff. But the most important thing to me was with the podcast that you were a co-host of, Man School 202, formerly known as the Beige Phillips Show. That's where I found you. That podcast literally has changed my life. Well, shout out to Dante Nero, man. Yeah, he was. Yeah, it's, it, it was obviously him. Well, I'll tell you what happened. I got hurt by a girl, mm -hmm. and someone put me. And I, 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 I listened to your podcast last week. Let me change this up. I listened to your podcast last week, and y'all was talking about the. Uh, and you do talk about this all the time. Uh, the the pickup artistry versus what y'all okay. talk about, right? Yeah. And I was I was in that world a little bit, and then someone goes, "You need to check out the Black Phillip show." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So then Patrice I watched all those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout out to the goat. So uh, I was, I, and I, I learned a lot from that at the time. Like I needed to hear that. Yeah. And then it was over, and I'm like, okay, well, I gotta like, how do I find more? And then I, I found Dante. Big Phillip. And then I found Same. Dante's podcast. Go ahead. Huh? I'm saying it's pretty much the same thing as like how you found it is the same way I found it. I was listening to Black Phillip because I just love Patrice O'Neill. And after a while, I, f like I heard Dante on it and then just searching Dante up, I found the Beige Phillip show. And then uh, how I got on that was through, they had a different co-host back then, uh, Myra. Yeah. Myra, yeah. Yeah, and... I fucking bullshit. I was like, yo, I'll be like y'all, y'all um intern. I'll like help y'all do shit. And then I got on the show and then I did never interned. I, I was the fucking that's how the worst intern in the world shit started because I did not do any intern <laughs> shit whatsoever. Like I immediately stopped being an intern right away. Was that was that drama why that she left? She was a yeah, big part they, of the show. Yeah, they had their own issues because that that shows they was going on way before I got there, and it's it's kind of like when you know, uh, like you grow up in your family and then you hit a certain age and all of a sudden you you're like your mom start telling you the family secrets. Yeah. Why she don't fuck <laughs> the aunt? Why the uncle don't come over? Fuck Cedric. All that type of shit start popping up, and then you're like, oh, I didn't know there was drama going down inside the house. You How old did you say you Xbox. were when you started hearing that kind of stuff in your family? Shit. Um, <laughs> I was, you know what? Possibly it really kicked off this year because I'm 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 28 now and we was just in the house. So like eventually people just got, you know, there's less shit to talk about. So they're like, you know what? Let me tell you about 1998. And then they just start going, just start telling you shit about your family. You find out some things like, oh, that's why Auntie Trina don't come over no more. Oh, yeah. I and ain't then, know y'all had beef. <laughs> and then you learn that like, man, my family just as messed up as everybody else. Everybody else. <laughs> this shit is like, it's not special. Sometimes you get special cases of my family's more fucked up than any other. But when that happens, they make a documentary out you motherfuckers. There's right. no, you know what I mean? Like that's right. when they start having a, I came from a cult. My dad used to burn chickens in the backyard or some wild shit. 
then yep. you start a documentary. But for the most part, everybody got the same level of dumbass family. All it, of us. We are you're born into a group of niggas that you don't know, and then you got to get to see if you like them or not. That's how family work. You know, That's I'm a big firm believer in uh, you know, they say blood sticking in water, and that ain't necessarily true. It, it ain't, I don't think it's just true off top. Cause not all it, no. Nah. I mean, and I get why that's a thing, because at the end of the day, even if you don't like them, they should have your back. But there's mothers who have put their kids in the microwave. Absolutely. There's like family <laughs> shit. Before that, the first time you get called ugly, you get you get called a, a dork, you get teased or some shit is before you leave your house. Right. Usually all of that shit get downloaded into your brain before you even step outside and deal with the rest of the earth you find out that you can't read or some shit like they, right, right, they right. tease you right away. Whatever wrong with you, you're going to find out early. Yeah, I was, I, hella, that's, I was hella chubby and uh, so I definitely got that. Yeah, like before you even went to school, they already started right. with the fucking fat jokes in the right. house. In the house. And that's supposed to be the safe space. That's supposed to be where you come home and like, I right, think I'm at home base. I'm good now. I made it. And I was like, right, nah, right. fatty. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> like they'll fuck with you right but there. But then, wait, but here's the problem though. Like, so they knew I was a big kid and they would always keep giving me more portions. More food, of course. Every time. They call me fat, but I'm going to be the one sexy nigga in the family with the abs and all this shit. No. Nah. Right. Come get this chitlins, nigga. You gonna get chunky like the rest of us. Hey, you still fuck, you, you fucking with chitlins still? Hell no. <laughs> Neither. Well, I did when I was younger though. I did not, when I was younger though. Did you ever? No, I've I've seen it and uh, all right, so I'm Jamaican and we don't have chitlins. We have we we have something called tripe. Oh, the Mexican stomach, right? Or like, pretty much Mexican Yeah, stomach. it's pretty much stomach. the same thing. So they yeah. have tripe and I don't eat that either. I wasn't I, with anytime they told me uh the preparation would be involved of like cleaning shit. I was like, so why y'all still eating it? Like yeah, that that should be the first thing to let you know. Maybe well, do you, you don't eat shrimp? Eat do you eat shrimp? I do eat shrimp. Hey, I know. Hey, hey. I know. <laughs> shrimp ain't nothing but a but a roach with a good weed. Right, right. Shrimp, <laughs> right, right. Shrimps are disgusting animals, but I don't know, man. So you put good. some on bitches, it's different. And then you eat like you eat all like lobster, crab, all that stuff too. Lobster, crab, every, so but like good. us fake try to be like, you know, healthy. Sometimes I, I I get like a little vegan kick or some shit. So I won't have certain foods for a while. But the issue is the times where I'm like, yo, this craving is kicking me, bro. I'm gonna come home with something crazy. You feel me? Like, it's how, gonna be how long you been trying to do the vegan shit. thing? I would say probably since like 2018. It'll be like oh. off and on. Like I'll go. The longest I went was like seven, eight months. Oh damn! And I ain't, I, I ain't have, I ain't have a motherfucking thing. And that was weird because even being a comic, it, it's not conducive to being vegan. They like all the free food they give you. Mm. Shit, being a comic not conducive to being healthy. You get a lot of free shit, but it's all the negative stuff. Free wings, free beer. Free Coke. <laughs> right, right. And I would imagine, too, like, as far as, like, the drinking in that atmosphere, you have to almost be, like, the club, is that's where the bar scene is, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So you're just yeah. kind of surrounded by that lifestyle. Absolutely. You got to be, uh, you definitely got to make a choice. You actively got to make a choice of, am I going to take this drink? Am I going to get another one when they offer it to me? You know, like, because people will, even after shows where you're not in a bar bar setting, Sometimes audience members after the show might want to hang out with you. And the first thing most people do to kick off a hangout is to be like, yo, let me buy you a drink. Right, right. Because that's what you do. And then you end up in a whole world of shit if you can't say no to that. Because usually that one drink will turn into two, three. Right. Yo, come, let's go down here. You smoke? Yeah. but And then now yeah. you're in a fucking now hangover you're doing lines movie. of cocaine on a, on yeah, a, on a credit card. Yeah, bro, I can't have that. <laughs> I can't have that. I'm not trying to end up in a fucking hangover movie, man. Well, I definitely, one of the main reasons, man, I wanted to get you on, man, is because, like I said in the beginning, your, y'all's podcast is so much more than women. And that's, that, it was, it's more like being a man. Mm. And, and that's what I got from y'all's podcast versus everyone else's and all the books I've read. Cause it was like, it just, it says the women gonna come if you be the best you. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one time that clicked, listening to y'all, that clicked. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just not even gonna chase them like that. Yeah. I'm gonna chase me, you know what I'm saying? Be the best me. Absolutely, yeah. And the paradox is that's when they come. And that's kind of like pretty much everything, you know, like even if you take it towards an artistic endeavor, the, the idea of, oh, what does the market want me to give them versus what is actually true to myself? What is really funny to me? What do I really care about saying? And then you kind like through that, you'll find the people that want to be found by you mm. in a sense, because you can fuck around and try to make yourself fit into a box, but you're forcing it. And mm. then people could see that. People could see you uncomfortable. Same thing with like women could see somebody's faking it. Like, all right, boom. You remember um Patrice? Patrice was a black Philip. He was talking about saying bitch. Oh, and yeah. He was yeah. like the thing about how he can say bitch because when he says it, it's not him putting on something. He's not like attempting to become somebody else where he's saying the word uncomfortably. He's no. uncertain of himself. Type he's of thing, he's authentically himself. Yeah, it's you. You got to be what you are, and if you're the type of dude that's gonna say that, then you you better fucking say it. And also, you got to be prepared for whatever's gonna come with it. Like what like, y'all always talk about is be willing to take that L. You fucking in that life, shit goes for everything, bro. Right, it right. goes for everything. If you're gonna be in these streets talking hot shit like you a tough guy, all right, but be a ready yeah, right. when a tough guy show up. Right, right, right. Because right. these niggas is out there and they hungry and you got on some good sneakers today. What's up? Right. You know now, what I mean? Like that's the front and never work, bro. I don't, I ain't playing no parts of that shit. <laughs> you know what? And I ain't even gonna lie, man. I used to I used to stunt. I used to buy fake Jordans. Mm. And listen, that would be okay if if when someone called me out on it, and I'm like, yeah, these is fake. You who's the idiot? You got, yeah, we got yeah, on the yeah. same Jordans, but I paid 60, you paid 300. Who's the real idiot at the end of the day? But yeah, yeah, it was yeah. the fact that I would lie about, try to hide it. Lie about that shit. And, and, Yo, and that and, reminded me of this Dominican kid I went to, I was in junior high with. This nigga had to be 29 in junior high. There was no reason. <laughs> you know the kid that had like adult man swag? Like he paid mortgages, but early. Oh, yeah. Was he driving? Like he was like that. <laughs> Bro, in ninth. In like eighth grade, homie was ready for the world, had a beard and everything. And I remember this Dominican nigga was like, oh, I only buy the fake Jordans. And he's telling everybody, and he still got mad bitches. Right? It's because it's authentic. Where, authenticity. Where, like on purpose, the Jordans be like, nigga, they, they never made that colorway. Ain't nobody ever made no cheetah print sevens. And then nigga <laughs> show up in his Dominican <laughs> cheetah print sevens. And I'm like, yo. But he rocked it though. Still worked. Still had him a shorty. Let me uh let me ask you about when did you when did you decide to say you know what I'm about to do the stand up comic thing. The first time I had the idea, I was in junior high. I had um I don't I don't know Chicago. You know the uh the Scholastic book trip shit. Like, oh, like in wait. junior high, you get like school points, and then you could use your school points to buy books at a book fair. No, nah, nigga, I never did. I never did no books. Yeah, they, they had that <laughs> shit. <laughs> Wait, what's a book? I don't even know what a book is. <laughs> they had that shit at my school when okay. I was in I was in junior high. They had the book fair joint, and I had my little book fair money saved up. And um, Bruce Bruce had a book think? out. Okay. The OG Triple OG had a book out, and in the book, he also in the back of it came with his album. And had one of the Bruce Bruce albums on it. So I seen that and I was like, oh was, shit. Like was it one of his specials or something? Huh? Was it like one of his specials or something? Yeah, it was okay. it was a whole comedy album. Okay. So I was like, here, take my school money. I bought the book. And bro, every day I would be reading fucking Bruce Bruce and listening to the jokes. Sixth grade on my way to school and shit. And that's just how I was. But that's when that's when I had the idea, like, yo, I'm gonna come be, I want to be a, a fucking stand-up comedian. You know, you tell your family that, and they're like, Nobody whatever, knows. nigga. Right, right. <laughs> like, okay. Okay. Yeah, because you know what? When I was younger, I was upset about it. But now that I'm older and I realize how weird of a business this is, I understand why they were like, we're not going to pay that any attention because how would they? How the fuck do you tell somebody to do? There's no information for this shit. 
Right. So I remember like that shit came up, you know, it didn't really get no attention. So I'm like, all right, I went off and I did a bunch of other shit. And then I hit 18 and I literally snuck off to a park, bro. I snuck off, skateboarded off to a park, called the comic strip, this comedy club in New York City. I called the comedy club up and I was like, yo, y'all do open mics and whatever. I booked my open mic night. And I was going to keep it a secret. I kept it a secret for like like months. For the first year, almost nobody knew. I would just come home late for no reason. <laughs> you you in a year? Yeah, I just kept doing it. Damn. Just quiet. Didn't tell nobody I was going out doing stand-up. Getting those nothing. reps up, right? Getting those reps yeah. up. Yeah. Right? But then let after you, that... Hmm? No, I was going to say, let me ask you this. What, yeah. what did you have to get over the fear of going up there? I know that's all thing people talk about being a stand-up comic. Getting um, over the fear. Nah, I think uh, I think I was always okay with looking stupid. So you, so I think so that's the most part that of L. fear. I th- right. Yeah, that's the most thing when people have fear is like, what are people gonna say? Are people gonna like it? Are they gonna make fun of me? And I, I was just, I was jaded by that shit. I've made, I, I've embarrassed myself too many times to give a fuck. Like, right, right. I will never forget this, bro. I, I can't wait for this to pop up in my life again because I remember in junior high, this was like eighth grade. And you know, towards the end of the school year, teachers and everybody stopped taking school serious. Yeah. They started letting you fuck around in the class. Yeah, yeah, you can have fun. Right, right, right. They brought the pizza party out, bro. Okay. So pizza party came out. We eat we in this classroom fucking up pizza, bro. Killing Smash. it. Smash. And then <laughs> snap, and then one box was left, and there was like two slices in that shit. And then the teacher was like, All right, whoever wants the two slices gotta have a dance battle for it. Who want a dance battle? And I was like, Who want war, nigga? I'm ready. <laughs> he was like, I, want, I want all the smoke. <laughs> all the pepperonis is mine. I was out that bitch doing a worm. I was crumping. I was like, What the fuck is wrong with this kid? <laughs> I was just ready. I was already okay with looking like a jackass. I didn't really give a fuck what people thought. You know, you know that's, that's easy. Do you think there's different levels of that? Absolutely, because as I've gotten further into comedy, I've gotten better with that feeling of I don't care. Mm. In the sense, it's a very particular I don't care, because I care how I'm received. I care if the show goes well. I care about my material meaning something. I care about trying to, you know, contribute something to the craft. However, if I feel like wearing a stupid shirt, I'm gonna wear that fucking shirt. If I feel like dressing a certain way, I'm gonna dress that way. If I feel like saying a joke in a whatever the way I wanna say it, I'm gonna just say it how I wanna say it. I'm not gonna try to like alter it so, so it can fit or be more palatable to whoever I'm thinking. Cause usually we're guessing what people want and we're guessing what they're going to like, but we don't really know. You're like, I'm sure this happened to you where you had a fan of your shit and you like, you like me? All the time. And it's like, how the All fuck the did you even find me, bro? Like, yeah, like well, that what? shit happens. You know, it's funny because <clears throat> that's what the cares none thing, right? So uh, the word itself would uh, imply that I don't give a fuck about nothing. Mm-hmm. But that's just not the case. Just like what you said, there's certain things you do give a you cares a lot about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's some things that that the way I look at it is the things that I cares none about are the things that keep me from accomplishing the things that I want to accomplish. Absolutely. And, and, and the yeah. big and the big things are like one of the biggest is f- failure. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, 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 the people's opinion, you yeah. know, uh, looking stupid, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And then if and I and I, the reason why you would say cares, I could almost argue it's it's disingenuous because the reason I, I flaunt it out is because I'm trying to tell myself to care none more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, you, why are you caring about that? I always talk about this, and sorry for anyone who's um, heard this already, but I used to eat, I used to get chicken wings at Jewel. We, I don't know if mm-hmm. y'all got Jewel out by you, but, and they had like these little, called, called wing zings. And I would go mm-hmm. in my car during lunchtime and I'd start smacking them bitches, pop, 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 pop. And yeah. then someone, like someone would pull up right next to me. And mind you, I'm just a regular guy eating lunch in his car, minding his own fucking business. But for some reason, I would put the wing down so like uh. see me looking like an idiot. Like, but but when you break that down, how dumb is that? Like yeah, you're a human being who eats, right? Mm-hmm. Now listen, I was a big dude, so obviously I had you know I got some of that whole trying to get over yeah. that shit. 
Yeah. But when you really break it down, here's a couple of things I learned from that in hindsight. One, they don't even give a fuck. Mm-hmm. Like who even and then even if they do give a fuck, they give a fuck for like two seconds and then they forget. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, oh, okay. And I just had, so I've been trying to steadily keep working on it. And then even when I post it, so my comedy is way different from yours, right? And the stand, and I know, and I want to ask you this too, stand-up comedy versus like the Instagram thing. I know a lot of this, people in stand-up kind of, at least back in the day, it was kind of like, oh, yeah. you, niggas, you niggas ain't where we had. And that's true. Mm-hmm. It's way different. It's a different practice because stand-up comedians also, when we try to freaking become, Instagram comedians or Vine comedians, it doesn't come out the same because we're it's two different types of mind thinking comedy. It's kind of like when there's a there's comedians who are made to write jokes. These people cannot perform them. I do not know why they don't have the they, the, the inability to change the tone of voice, the inability to like show ex- facial expressions, stage presence. Certain things are missing, but they can fucking put some words together. That's funny. And then there's that type. Then there's other types who who are all stage presence and no real words, but because of everything else going on, it works. So it's just like so many ways to get the same job done, you know, make somebody happy, get a laugh, right. all of that. But it's just different ways to get to that avenue. But let me ask you, though, would you say I think it's starting to change now, but there was definitely like a almost like a look down upon. Oh, absolutely. Hell yeah. Is, is that still going to an extent? Because we still see it as stand up comedy the stage and microphone the 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 emptiness of stage mic and that's it that's the show is right. is undefeated right there is no help there is no assistance there is no nigga, like as far as editing you, a clip or something like that you mean bro it is you and People, they're staring you dead in your eyes, mm. just looking at you, waiting. And it's like that that rawness, that level of it's a fucking there's some you feel it. It's a it's a real live fight. Like you feel that shit. It's a tangible air, you know what I mean? And that can't get replaced. So because the people who are who really go into that lifestyle, you you have to live a certain way. You know what I mean? Doing stand-up before COVID, I was coming home 3.30 to 4 a.m. every single night of the week. You know what I mean? It's You live a certain lifestyle and that shit will give you, you'd be like, yeah, y'all not doing what I'm doing. Y'all doing another version. Right, right. It's different. It's definitely different. And then when you hear the shit that the people who do Instagram shit for real, for real, and the YouTube for real, for real, 17 videos a day, 16 hours worth of editing, then it's like, that's a whole nother grind. <laughs> right, right, right. It's an entire grind. It's a whole nother lifestyle where you sit on that motherfucking computer and you work and you tit and you SEO and you change that and you hashtag and yeah. it's another dedication. So it's just like, through as time goes, I feel like we're both just gonna meld, you know? The world's come together. People learn how to work with each other and that's really it. That's well, weird. I like your I like your perspective on it because it, it doesn't come off condescending. And uh, but so it would like, be foolish too, man, because you can see talent wherever talent is. If it's real talent, you're gonna be able to tell. You're yeah. gonna be able to tell. Because I know, like, with the whole, uh, so I do everything via you know camera and stuff like that. Yeah. And I didn't go to school for no editing, and I had to go on YouTube. Just picked it up and rocked. Yeah. Right, right. And it's a lot, man. That shit is not easy, and <laughs> comics are learning that now. Especially <laughs> now because of the, the COVID, COVID yeah. we can't go outside and do what we've been training to do mm. because they've removed that right now. So we had to right. find other avenues. And now, shit, I'm on the internet going, what the, f- how the fuck do I hashtag this? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> it's a, man, what, it's, what's it's the so edit, much, man. Right. It's so much behind the scenes too. And even with y'all, like people see a finished product and don't realize what the fuck is going on Absolutely, behind the scenes. Yeah. They see like if hour, I. And they think that that's that's it. You just went up there and you got you was funny for the night. And it's like, nah, oh, that's like a year or two in the making and shit. Sometimes <laughs> yeah, you got to like fine tune literally like you select words, man. Like I've had jokes where I was like, just for an example, instead of saying select, I would say tangible or it, like you have to pick you. You're, you're going to pick words like I've heard people go so deep into being like, 
it's a joke about a car and they'll be like, so I was driving my Nissan and like, mm -mm, Nissan ain't it. I was driving a Buick. Buick is the one. And people laugh harder on Buick for some fucking reason versus they laugh harder on Honda or something. So why do you think that is? It's just, it's just, it's just the way it Because the, 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 when with stand up and like live performance, you get to have these moments of, there's different breakdowns. You have phonetic language and diction and, it's like rap. You have like how rappers would make, they'll force a word to rhyme with another uh, word. Even though it and don't technically like rhyme, that. but but you can make it. it. You can fucking make it work. Right. And you have to be the one to carry that shit across the finish line. That's the, now, is that it, type of thing where you're now like- Now is that what you mean? Is that when y'all practice? So like, you know, when you go up every day, are you trying new shit every time you go up? So you work the same. So tell me the breakdown of how you work on a joke. Well, all right. Well, that also goes case by case for comics, because some comics, I kind of came with the mindset. I was I'm such a huge rap fan that once I started comedy, I thought we were supposed to be similar to like rappers where you just constantly have shit, you just keep making stuff up. You never say the same bars over again. So to, for for you, for my first five to six years, you can ask my homies, bro. We was running running these mics together, running shows together and shit. I would not say the same jokes. Every single night, I would try something else. And then See, I would imagine that would set you up for more L's because you didn't work. Yeah. Right, You right. fucking bomb. <laughs> you absolutely got a bomb. But then- but Which is still good, though, because you get, to feel, you get to feel that. Isn't that the whole key? You got to, like, own it? You got to own it and- you you could even bombing. There's a skill set in learning how to bomb right. They, like all Dante bombing always, isn't equal. I feel like Dante, all y'all, well, not all y'all. He would say, if if it's like you got to know that this audience, if they ain't fuck with you, then you got to just like go in there, like all right, well then I'm shooting everybody down. And he and that was what his whole thing but was. That's Dante's style. Dante style is like, I'm I'm going to come directly at you the whole fucking time <laughs> the whole time i'm yeah, he cares not for sure <laughs> right, like right. that's how he rock <laughs> you right, know what right. i'm saying and then there's other people who are like you know more docile in their attempt and then there's like it, it, it also matters what influenced you you know like i run off on tangents a lot when i perform especially if i'm doing an hour 40 minutes and shit like that i'll have i'm the type that will start with a if i'm Let's say I have a political joke. The political joke is happening, and then suddenly a word will come up, and then my brain will be like, holy shit, new idea. And then now I'm off talking about Jurassic Park. Okay. And then I'll have to be, this shit happens often, especially because I try to like build a rapport with people, and then I'll finish the Jurassic Park shit, and then I'm like, what the fuck was I talking about? And then some person will yell out, politics! Oh, and then I'll go, go back to the politic okay, thing. Yeah. But that's just how I want to perform. I like to perform and feel like we are hanging out. Mm. Like, I love to feel like we all in a cypher and we just like, what happened? Nah, nigga, you wallet. Like, I like that shit. Because I like to just fuck around. But then there's others who want it to be more militant style. And they have, they've written the material they want to say. And they will not deviate from that material. Mm. Now, now, now do, you, do, you, do you find yourself writing a lot or no? I write a fuck ton. I write more now than I ever did in college, high school, or anything. So let me ask, okay, so that's that's kind of what I'm dealing with because at the end of the day, a lot of, you know, I get into a lot of shit too, but when it comes to like a joke, something I think is funny, mm -hmm. let's say you you out with your boys and you, what I do, tell me if this is a good way or not. And I guess what you're telling me is it don't matter, whatever works for you. It but, don't matter, yeah. Right, right. So what I'll be is I'll be sitting with someone and then I'll be like, oh shit, that's funny. Yeah. I'll write it in my phone because I know if you Hell don't write yeah. it down, you forget the shit. Hell yeah. But this is the part that I have trouble with sometimes is now do you have that base idea and then when you go back to it, how do you start breaking it down to make it work? Well, from, from the way I would do, my, even the way I do stand up into now, like even when I'm workshopping material throughout the pandemic and I wasn't able to just go to a comedy club every night, I would just say it. I would just it'll be in conversation. I was, even if I'm doing a podcast in the podcast episodes when I'm by myself, I still form it as conversation. 
So even right. though you're you're listening to a singular voice, it can still feel as though you it can does. have the opportunity to respond to me. Hey, shout out, shout out your 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 podcast right now too. Oh, between spots, one. between okay. spots, Andre D. Thompson. Okay. But and, yeah, like I and still two hundred two. Oh yeah, Man School two hundred two. That okay, so. Man School two hundred two is Dante's. That's Dante's baby right there. Yeah, that's his baby. But you you a big part of that shit though. Oh yeah, I love the nigga. That's 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 gang. Yeah. Man School two hundred two. Between okay, so, spots. Oh, okay. Yeah. So then you, so did you actually, so you just try to say, oh, that's a good idea. Because to be honest, a lot of times the things that I think are funny are things that were said in conversation. Almost yeah, so every it's time. pretty much figuring out how your brain chemistry is going to break down material. That's really what it is. You're like constantly wondering how do I take in material and then how does it come out? So like I've spent time learning how my brain chemistry uses information where do I find it? How do I come across it? And then how do I re regurgitate? Because even if you were like, say you was to find my computer, I'm not by it. You just come to my room, my computer's open, you on my internet. The way my Safari would look, my internet would look, is I have at any given moment, 100,000 tabs open. Mad software is running at the same time. <laughs> Slowing your shit all the way down. All the way down. <laughs> <laughs> like I gotta be cognizant of oh shit, that's open, that's open, that's open. Right. But that's the way I speak, that's the way my mind works, and that's how I digest information. So like if I'm even when I'm reading books, for for the most part, it'll be like a, a time where I have five different books of all and all five are of completely different basis of thought, completely different ideas. But I'm reading all five simultaneously, but I will never finish all five together. Right. Today, there'll be I'll read three pages out of this book, and then the other day I'll, I'll read a chapter from this shit, and then the next day um, I'm reading, and then something happens, and it'll come out in some way. Mm. So it's just like you figure out how your shit works, and then you go like I, my homie Nico White, ill ass comedian, also from New York, and Nico, he's more of like. He's meticulous. He's gonna, he has point A, and then he breaks that shit down step by step by step by step by step by step. And then once that point is finished, it's like a typewriter, clink, finished. Now on to the point B, step by step by step by step by step, mm. clink, finished. And that's how he rock. And then like just everybody got their own style. Like I'm gonna run off on a gajillion different tangents and it's gonna right. be like, like, oh, sh it's just shit happening. Cause that's just how I like to digest info. See, like, like, so to mention Chappelle, I remember being high one day and this is when I first got into this and I'm, cause I'm like, let me just watch comedians and watch what's funny and just get out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just, just to get the brain flowing. Get and what I loved culture. about, right, right, right. And what I loved about him is he would, he would make a joke and then he mm -hmm. would do his joke and then he would like hit back on that original joke like several times throughout the whole, and then end it on that first joke. The nigga's crazy with it, bro. <laughs> and I'm like, it's crazy with it. I'm like, oh, it's like this whole shit is intertwined into bop. Yeah. So I guess the, the what the reason I bring that up is it seems like comedians and stand-up comics are just funny people tend to look at the world a little different. different. Yeah. You know, and then like 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 comedians, most of the ones I know, like listen to you talk, it's you, you just you you see it in a more complex way than just kind of like like you ain't just walking around this motherfucker just. Like oh yeah, like even it. with the idea when you're talking about you'll be in your car eating and then you'll have the moment of damn somebody's watching me. I have the moments like where I'm like, I know I look weird to somebody right now, but I am weird. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm fully aware. I'm a fucking weirdo. <laughs> like, I'm mm. I'll be doing weird shit. I'll be in my backyard barefoot meditating on top of some shit doing like I do weird stuff and I and I'm I'm used to hearing it. Mm. But it's like uh it's it's also you people sh should see it. Right. You know, like that's how you have these new ideas. It's because you've seen something that wasn't there before mm. and it sparks a new thing. You know what? That kind of reminds me of y'all of Man School 202 last episode. Harry was talking about, uh, and shout out to Harry, the, another co-host. Harry, to Janie and the homie. 
he was mentioning um, how he's not going to see the lilac. In oh, New York. yeah. It was, a, it was good because then you came with a good point and Dante gave you hella credit and it, and it made sense. And I, and I totally get that because I think Harry had a good point. And if you don't want to do some shit, don't do some shit. And mm -hmm. I, 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 I fucked with that. But I also mm -hmm. like how you said, well, something. And you was like, nigga, you don't know everything. And I don't think you were talking specifically to him. You were just saying like yeah. we don't know. You know, the no, more yeah. like the more we the more we know, the more we realize we know nothing, kind of thing, right? No, nothing, absolutely. And I liked how you were saying you actually say yes to more shit, even if you don't mm -hmm. necessarily want to do it off top because it could spawn some whole new shit in your life. Some whole new shit. I have, I have books in here that I bought that I know for a fact when I got it and I went up to the register, they was like, "What the fuck are you buying this for?" Like I know <laughs> they were thinking that. Right. I had this this one makes me laugh every time I see it. This one right here. Fucking combat in the erogenous zones. <laughs> it, it, it's it's the idea of of like women's bodies and feminism and how people don't, you know, respect the sanctity and all kinds of different shit. And I don't whatever, you know, but my brain is like, I'm I bet you Let's for some reason. I'm gonna read something on page 216 and that's gonna make me think of some other shit. And then that mm. other shit is gonna make me think of something else. And then boom, I have a whole new thing now. It's like, oh, it's like, like that's how I see horizons. it. Right, it's right. just like, I feel like I, I have, I read things that have nothing to do with me. I watch mm. shit that have nothing to do with me. I go to places that ain't got shit to do with me. Cause I'm like, something in here is gonna trigger off something that's gonna link to something else that right. may, you know, create some. That's not like food. Oh, I, when you I, cooking, when you cooking, you making your shit, and you look in your pantry, you see all these damn fucking spices and ingredients. You pop into your fridge, you see mad shit, and you like, all right, I know I'm making an omelet that's a classic bacon, egg, and cheese, or something like that. And then you go, what if I just throw some rosemary on it? What happens? And like, that's how I like to look at everything. Like, what if I just did this shit? And it goes back to the point that you could put some rosemary and fuck it up, but you were still willing to take the L. Willing to take the risk. Right, right. And now I got the story of, remember that dumbass time I put rosemary in my bacon, egg, and cheese? Mm. Fuck around, you get a, you might turn that into a little joke, like. But then the reward is, the, it was, it might have been fire with the rosemary on it. But the reward is anything, because if I if I right. come away with a with a fun ass story and. It's great. We having a good time from it. There you go. That's a reward. Right. You know, if I have a new perspective that I can now implement into my life and enrich it, reward. If I actually get to eat the damn thing and it tastes great, reward. Like, I just see it as, I don't fucking know. It might be dope. Right, right. You know, as it's, long it's, as it's not going to harm, I'm in. You know, I, uh, speaking of the food thing, I was, I was talking to this girl. Yeah, and this is this is before I even knew anything about what I know now because of y'all. But uh, and I was, you know, I was trying to court her. We just started going out and dating and everything. Mm -hmm. And she was like, "I love Indian food," and I'm like, you know, I'm a nigga. I'm like, yeah, I don't know, but mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, ain't and no tiki is, masala over here. So in in hindsight, <laughs> in hindsight, the 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 I did something that I didn't want to do, and I would have thought based on other than what we're talking about now that you should have tried it anyway. So I guess I still ended up doing it right ultimately. But at the time, I was doing it just to please her which just to I should have did it just because I wanted to try some new shit try some new shit right right so anyway so I'm like all right whatever so I go there end up loving tiki masala <laughs> shit was fire I was like okay so now you in the crib making that on your own and I, and I have <laughs> right right so and, and then another thing um and a lot of people don't get this and uh subtitles she used to I'm like well, how, how the fuck are you watching subtitles right mm -hmm. and but she's like I don't know I just do it but whatever Again, for the wrong reasons at the time, but in yeah. hindsight, the right reasons now. Now I can't watch a movie, and, and to me, I do get the movie more with the subtitles, because there's mm. so many things that I typically would have missed. You know, and it, the subtitles the subtitle, don't work for comedy at all. The subtitle thing uh, worked for me in the sense of, now I get to watch movies and films and all these other things from other places people that speak a different language, people that oh. grew up a different way. Mm -hmm. And now because I can get to read the shit, right. I get to see and experience what they experienced and look at the life through their lenses. So you definitely so, check out subtitles? Like you put them on? Yeah, I'll fuck with subtitles. I don't love them, 
because I like to do my reading in books. I don't want to, if I decide <laughs> to watch something, I want to just fucking watch it. Right. I don't want to read watch. Now I'll tell but you this. Times Wait, I will do. I'll, I'll tell you this though. I was the same way. And now, mm -hmm. cause I, if, and I get the people's philosophy be like, why you're not watching it? Like you're, you're reading, but mm -hmm. I promise you, once you get used to like the quick, you Absolutely. still catch, you still catch the movie. Absolutely. I mean, I've, I've caught on my original time of learning how to fuck with the subtitles is because I fuck with anime. Mm, okay. I love anime. So if you love anime, you're going to watch something with subtitles at some point. That's just right. how the shit work. You know, right. like most anime is coming from Japan and China. So that's what you're going to see. And that's when I was like, all right, I'm going to watch Dragon Ball Z, Naruto and all these other things because the, there once you you'll get to a certain thing too a certain like season and they stop making it in dubbed which is like they put in the american right. voices on it they don't make that shit no more so if right. you want to continue to watch the show you enjoy you got to read now you gotta, yeah you got. now yeah, i, mean, I never like got into the the is it you think it's a generational thing because i feel like a lot of cats younger than me you know possibly 20, 22 to 30, you know 28 around you know around your age Possibly. I'm an eight, you know, I'm 36. I'm an 80s baby. Yeah. I, just, I never got into the anime. So you're more with like comic books, right? Uh, you know what? I didn't read. So <laughs> what a, a big reader. But uh, now I was like, I was a Power Rangers. Okay. You know. Yeah. Dude, because there's certain shit from each era that's going to be like, that's going to stick more. Right, and the only right. reason I brought up the comic books is because comic books predates both of us. Like mm -hmm. they were writing those shits forever. So you can you get to pick your, you know, Marvel or DC and you can go off with that. But with, when Japanese anime got fucking popular, that's like when super it was big. Manga. Yeah. Manga's out and all of that. So you it was like a whole subculture to its own. Right. Let me ask you this in the pivot. Cause I, I wanted to make sure to ask a couple questions. Tell me your experience with the Jimmy Fallon situation. How dope was that? Like uh, how, did, how did it get kicked off? Like everything. So from the very beginning of the, the idea of that, how did it get kicked off? It was um, doing, I did the NBC stand up NBC competition and I did mine in New York and in, and in New York, a part of the competitions judges was one of the bookers for NBC for Fallon. One of the bookers is the judge. So I did my my semifinals, my audition and everything in New York. And then I met the judge there. And then I got I got selected to be a finalist, flew out to LA. And then I it was like, yo, we like what you did in New York. Try it this way for tonight. And I was like, okay. How'd you, I don't even you know feel why. About that? I, I was just thinking, like, I'm guessing this is like a challenge. Maybe you're just trying to test me or some shit. So, OK, that's how I took it. Kind of like a sports thing. Like, oh, maybe you're just like trying to challenge me. Now, see, and to I'm interrupt like, you, right. I always hear that people always get weird about that. Like, why are you trying to change what you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you because what I gave I you. I, maybe they're afraid. Maybe it, they're it was like. On TV? Yeah, it's gonna be on TV and shit. No, I'm saying but, you think that's why they was afraid, cause like you can't get as crazy, probably. No, so like I, right, I would think it may come from the idea of or you're gonna like mess up my material. You know, you're gonna like have me look away that that's that's not authentic to who I am or right, something. Right, that's what I'm thinking. Right, 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 right. Yeah, like they might change you too much, but um, the the suggestions that was made for my set wasn't crazy it, it wasn't telling me to talk about some shit that i would never say so it was it still fit in what i was doing and it was just like i ain't really got nothing to lose here right i, I came out here to try to get me something right right, right so right, if right. the dude with the something to be gotten is like hey try it this way mm. i i'm gonna show you that i can do it my way and your way and get the mm. job done that's how i took it so i just i did the set it was like that we like it yo you ever thought about doing late night and that's how it came up it was just like in a conversation like would you try it this way after i've done the set a couple times and okay. i was like malleable because one thing i noticed with late night is especially if you see like your first couple sets first time on they're in they're in your set they're like 
there's certain shit you can't say on TV. Right, 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 right. There's certain topics you're not supposed to bring up. Like I was. Yeah, what are some jokes, of those? <laughs> police. Oh. One of the jokes that I had for the set, the original closer brought up police. And it didn't, I didn't like, it wasn't on no NWA shit. You know, I wasn't like, right, fuck right, the, right. it wasn't yeah, that right, right. <laughs> was, <laughs> Fucking cops. Yeah, it was just right, the acknowledgement right. that, hey, our relationship ain't too fun. Right, you right. Know, there, when there, I see there, you, there, shit is there's different. been discrepancies. There's been some discrepancies, <laughs> man. Just a few, just a few. Right. You know, we don't we don't get along too hot. So that was it. And they <laughs> and were it's like, been, yeah, you can't have it's been none a while. Of that. It's been a wait. Okay, that's a good point. They shut that. They was like, yep, can't say none of those words on national TV. So change that. Wow. All right. So he's and, okay. So I guess the reason I bring that up is yeah. because if you put in a situation where this might be the opportunity, why not mm -hmm. get up on that? Why not? But then, the, but then on the flip side, like Joe Rogan, for instance, yeah. he always talks about how in the beginning, when he first started getting advertisements, they said, you know, you got to put them in the middle of the episodes. Yeah. Right? And he was like, no, nah, I ain't doing that because it fucks up with the flow of the conversation. <laughs> and he was like, I'm telling you this. And then he was like, well, then I just won't fucking do it. It didn't now look, he's one of the goats of it. Absolutely. So, so my point is, is there's got to be a fine line, but he already has some shit established, maybe, you know what I'm saying? So maybe that's Which what it was. gives you leverage so that right. you can argue certain shit. And that's right. the other thing that people constantly forget to mention in their stories is the the times when they said, OK, let me get in the door, mm -hmm. get in that, learn how the shit works, build my own, have my own credibility. Right have my own standing and everything, and then use that to leverage a career. But you don't just come in with nothing and be like, nah, nigga, I'm doing yeah, this. Nah. <laughs> right, right. I, I don't got nothing to prove. I don't got, I don't got anything that to show my, show my work. I haven't right. done anything, but I'm gonna tell you how it's gonna go. It was like, I haven't seen that work. Yeah, so I, I, you're right. That's probably, he don't, you know, he don't talk about what he did. Cause like, like look how long we've been watching Joe Rogan, Fear Factor and all these other things. Right, He's been right. doing stand up that whole time. He had something and he started the podcast from way back then too. Yeah, 2010. So he had a listenership already. He right, had, right. he was, he was already rocking. And then he right. built that and then, all right, now you coming in when I got a couple million listeners we can have a discussion of how I would like this to go versus I have three listeners and you have the million and right, I'm right. still gonna be like, nah, this is how it's gonna work. Don't nobody listening to you yet, nigga. Right, right. Now, let me ask you this, like, did, there's a part of, I, I think, don't you think it's not, it ain't necessarily cut and paste. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there is times like, you know what? Like for instance, Dave Chappelle and signing that uh, that deal and that whole thing that just happened recently with him. and yeah. I would say like he he signed that thing kind of knowing like he knew what was popping, right? Like as far as what he was getting. I would think you don't think you have at least an idea, you know, entertainment lawyers or something. That's what I would think. Yeah, at that time. And but then like, also it's like I've seen times where you're like, damn, I mean, I wanna get in. Right. And at those times, especially, you can't really just say, I'm a fuck it, I'm gonna take my shit to YouTube. There wasn't no YouTube yet. See, I think the YouTube has definitely helped people with that kind of balls. Yeah, to be to like, I can make moves. my own shit. I can have right. my own, you know, fucking fan base and everything without needing a huge network to say it's okay to listen to this guy. Which is but, so dope nowadays. I think that having that, everyone can do their own shit. Then you got the Patreons and all that kind of shit. Yeah. So, which is but super that, dope. I just want to see what's going to go forward because I don't think these massive companies are just going to disappear. They're not going to no. just roll a fuck over and go. They're going <laughs> right. to get theirs. <laughs> yeah, like this shit is it's sports, bro. Like people really get drafted. This shit is on some we're going to buy up your talent for this amount of time or something. They throw money your way or try to make a deal a negotiation. Like shit's in a weird spot right now. Super weird. Let me ask you this. What is your what is your goal? Like, mm. like, what is it that you desire? You just trying to get some laughs. You trying to make people laugh. You trying to feel better. Like, what is your desire in in doing in being a stand up comic? My desire in being a stand up comic. Like, 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 what is Solely like? Before, how about comic? before you die? What do you want to be known for? I affected culture. I want people to to see certain 
designs, certain edits, certain like this is why I make weird shit like this. No, that's hella because dope, though. I I like things to have, you know, style. You know, I want I want something to be easily identifiable where it's like you see and you go, I Andre was involved with this. Mm. You know, I, I want the idea of different worlds coming together. Like Kinda I have like a lot talk of about Kanye issues. last weekend or last week. Like I've, yeah, like I love that shit. Right. Yeah, like you putting worlds together and and the idea of not having a limitation on a singular form of art where I have to only be a comedian. Like that that is only one of the things that I am good at. I have other things that I am good at and they can all join forces. They can come together like yeah, I don't have Back to in the like day, this. fucking Picasso, you know, writers and like they would hang out together. And they feed off of each other's artistic energy and see mm-hmm. different things and open up perspectives and shit like that. So, affecting culture, like I want I want to make presets so that when you open up your 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 editing app, there's a preset that I designed to help your picture. You just press it and your picture mm-hmm. look like how I would create a picture. You know, like shit like that, even clothing, chairs, like all of that type of stuff, you know, books, just affecting culture in a real way, because I feel like so often people kind of. They skip over culture, even when they listen to music, they don't listen to all of it. They skip over so much of what was put into the song. They skip over so much that was gone into these scripts, these movies, and it's like. People are digesting art too fast. They got to slow down. They're not even taking the time to actually enjoy the thing, to actually hear each lyric, to know what they're saying, to see if it's even good, to see if it's bad. Like, I fall into that gap all fast. the time, man. I literally, like, I've never been great at remembering the lyrics. Mm. So I've, I, I ain't gonna lie. I've definitely, I like the sound of the guy's voice with the song, but yeah, I'm very rarely, and I'm being honest, and I, and I see what you're saying. I don't break down like what is like what, what the he hell said? did he just say I, like sometimes yo he would be saying some fuck shit in song <laughs> and if he this hit- one is fresh <laughs> on my mind because it blew when i heard this shit i was like nah so like, you ever heard something so bad you gotta turn it off like, <laughs> i got never- to press pause <laughs> like- i had to press pause bro i almost went and restarted my router like i was like this is insane <laughs> i was listening to little pump oh <laughs> The nigga had the song came on. He said, I don't he said, first off, he said, I shot niggas. Then like like a little break happens and then he goes, I don't eat food. I'm a drug addict. <laughs> but the beat is crazy. Yeah, right, right. And that's how people just get laws. They start fucking with the beat. And it was like, wait a you minute, mean I don't eat food. <laughs> <laughs> like what do you I think? don't eat food I am a drug addict is a wild thing to say <laughs> right 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 and this is the dude who's like grown niggas is not listening to little pump no you're not listening to no little pump no but yeah he got a couple of, is he got he has a couple little hits that I was kind of but but again I wasn't really listening to the substance I was just it was the, it was the song the only the, time the, I ever the, heard little pump bro is when Kanye had him on that song that was definitely the, that was definitely that the was one the I think I'm talking time. about right right but then I'm like, all right, he wasn't bad on this. Let me see what else he got. And then I heard the other shit. And I was like, oh, he's retarded. <laughs> and then he did this shit with Trump. Didn't he have like, didn't he do some shit with oh, Trump? Oh, when they called him Lil Pimp? I, yeah. that, I don't know. <laughs> what was the purpose? I know they, they was probably trying to get the culture in to get on Trump's side. That's the thing. They and they picked the wrong one. Who you think yeah. riding with Lil Pump? Nah, not the you gonna get the black think... vote with Lil Pump? <laughs> no, you lost a black vote with that. <laughs> Nigga, you better go get you some Meek Mill or something. That, that ain't nobody <laughs> fucking with no Lil Pump. Well, 50 Cent came out. And, well, was it Lil Wayne? 50 they... and Lil Wayne had a little, like, something. Oh, I, th- I th- what I thought was Lil Wayne actually did something, and 50 was like, nah, I ain't doing it. 50, yeah, I think 50, like, made fun of the situation, but Lil yeah. Wayne did end up with a picture with Trump. But also with the Lil Wayne and Trump thing, I genuinely don't think Lil Wayne knew what was going on. I don't think Lil Wayne was- Does he know when anything's going on? (laughs) Yeah, like Lil, he be high talking about spaceships and and being from another moon or some shit. That nigga not paying attention to whatever the fuck Trump was saying. Remember he was talking about some some white nigga named Bob? 
He's not listening to that, man. He's just... <laughs> Hey, Lil Wayne is in his own world, his bro. Own universe. <laughs> Counting his dreads. He's just making right. sure all of them is still there. Like that's all he's doing. He just sold his uh he just sold his his whole young money, didn't he? For real? Hundred million dollars, including the masters. Yeah, he's for hundred million. And he just got, got a gun charge. Like yeah. too much is happening right now to that dude. I'm like, so, there's like a, a conspiracy. Why the fuck? Yeah. Something weird going on, bro. Because he just came back. He dropped, I think, two or three fucking fire albums. Yeah. And then out of nowhere, gun charge of the craziest kind. And do you know the, do you know the spe- uh, went to jail already? Do you know the, spe- the, the, the specifics of the gun charge? I know I the man is probably facing like 10 years. And Wayne has a record already. He already went to jail for, I think, a gun charge. Oh, so you 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 would say there's a chance he definitely ends up behind bars on this one? It's like, it's, I hope the fuck not, but it looked like it. You know what I mean? It's just it just doesn't make sense the 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 timeline. He had the beef with Wayne with with Baby not releasing none of his songs. Right. Then he gets the songs released, ends up in some fucking picture with Trump. Then after the Trump picture, gets a gun charge, and now he sold all his music. It's like what the fuck happened to Wayne, bro? Wait, and it ain't just it was. I don't, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but it wasn't just his music. It was also the masters to the people under him. So it was like some of, Drake, some of Drake's masters, Damn. some of uh, Nicki Minaj's masters. That's fucked up. A lot See, of like say it was worth more than hundred million on. dollars. Something going on, bro. Even with them contracts and all this shit, it's real crazy. It yeah, is kind, like, like kind of like that uh, that that stimulus bill. You saw it, it was five thousand pages. Did the stimulus bill. Uh oh. That <laughs> fucking. <laughs> The stimulus bill, bro. <laughs> Woo! How you hey, how you feel about the stimulus bill? Nigga, I can't wait I see, this. For one, they know good and damn well. None of us keep seeing these posts of like stimulus bill simplified. Cause people <laughs> know we don't know what the fuck that shit mean. No. That's it's the five thing. thousand pages. They they know that they're writing these things like in in code. <laughs> like I've heard you you see, I swear movies will give you like little gems of knowing people are fucking with you. Cause I remember I was watching this movie, I forgot the name of the movie, but the dude said something along the lines of, Oh, did you write the contract? And the guy goes, Yeah, nobody can understand this shit, not even me. Mm. And that was the punchline. But that's what that sh- they always say, you know, uh there's a little bit of truth in a joke or something like that. Right. That shit is purposeful. They know for a fact they're going to write it in such confusing jargon right. that you're going to be like, what? I get, huh? all right, whatever. Fuck, shit. Do you all right, that, fine. Sign it. Damn. Do you think that that's where the whole uh, you signing your soul over to the devil comes Come from? Come on, man. Yeah, right, right. The fact that that's even a joke lets you know right. that they know what they're doing. None of these things happen by accident. None of this shit is a, a coincidence. When they go, when all, think about all of the lawyer jokes you hear. You have never heard a positive lawyer joke. Never, never not one time. <laughs> right? Mind you, lawyers get people out of jail. Lawyers get people some money. But still, you never can find a positive lawyer joke. It's not by accident. Mm. That is purposeful. They know for a fact my job is to fuck somebody over. <laughs> like, yeah, it's fucked up, that is bro. what the job is. <laughs> I'm gonna fuck somebody over. Yeah, man. Like the whole, this the whole, in, just the whole state of politics. Have you? Have, would you say you've gotten more involved this year, more, more than ever before? No, I stay the same level of involved. I like peek over. Me in politics. You remember Home Improvement? Mm-hmm. And that and that uh, old nigga that, that was like look over the fence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was that nigga? Uh, shit. What was his name? I don't remember, bro. But that's how I treat politics. I'll be yeah, chilling in my own space, and then I hear some wild shit. I'll be like, what the fuck y'all doing? Wow. And that's no, it. And then that's it. Because, like, for, all right, I see it this way. I grew up in the hood. Uh, the hood has never not been the hood, no matter what president was there. Never not. It didn't take a break. It didn't get ain't no extra shit. We ain't get no new vegetables. It's been the same level of ghetto. But every fucking president that ever presidented. Ever. So it's like, 
this isn't gonna solve my problems. This is I don't this not it for me. Right. Like I feel like when I when I get wrapped up in real life, I feel like you talk about politics a lot, it wraps people up and shit. A lot of people end up thinking that like you really gonna see the benefit, like the the even with the ideas of these people voting for Trump, Dave Chappelle talked about it. It was like the person that's gonna benefit from this guy is the people with money. I know. I'm a, I'm gonna eat. They're gonna take your next break. Are you getting stupid? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> he don't give a fuck about your ass either. You work for a coal mining company. <laughs> right. You're not getting no tax breaks. If you if you concerned about getting a stimulus check, do not concern yourself with a tax break right, at all because you qualify for the stimulus. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> you qualify for the shit that says niggas need help. <laughs> right, right, right. So right, it's right. like if you in that boat, fuck you doing talking about yeah, hedge funds. It's only two sides to that. <laughs> It's either you're not you a hedge fund manager, you're not getting stimulus. that kind of bread. Come on <laughs> now. Right. Uh, I, I would say this year more than, I've always said fuck politics, because I, I think it's all bullshit. I feel like, in my opinion, this could be a conspiracy, but at the end of the day, they like working together. Oh, kind absolutely. Of, you know what I I'm saying? That. I believe that. Conquer and divide, you, then you get your team and you think as long, you know. So I'm I always a little bit like, shit. fuck all of it. But I Too would, many I times was, they showed times of the, the 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 Republicans being in favor for whatever group you identify with, and then the the Democrats are against it. Then it switches, and then they yeah. switch again, and then they, it's, it's just shit. like clearly you motherfuckers are the same people. Right, right. There's one White House. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. One. There's only one. Right. They share the same place. Yep. There's one of everything. There ain't two embassies. There ain't two White Houses and two fucking Pentagons. It's the one building for all you motherfuckers. Y'all the same people. Right. The Lakers and the Clippers don't practice in the same faci facilities. It's the Lakers and Clippers are both from Los Angeles and they got different places. Right. right How the right. fuck the damn Republicans and Democrats don't got different places? Brooklyn Nets and the fucking Knicks don't practice in the same place. We both from New York. Right. So if sports teams are separating it and showing you true separation, how come you guys can't? Because you are the same people. It's the same people. And it seems like, and this could be real conspiracy, and I, I you know, I'm, I'm, I, I lean towards the conspiracy sometimes. Just because I, my whole thing is, you can't prove to me that it's not, I'm you know. I'm down for conspiracies, because <laughs> okay, listen, white good. people have been doing nothing other than lying for centuries. <laughs> Literally centuries. Centuries. Whites have done nothing other than lie for centuries. Centuries. That's why they call it little white lie. White lies. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All they do is lie. This is a white bitch lying right now. As we speak. Right. And her name lies. Is, her name is Karen, too, for sure. Lying. Right. Bitch right. name not Karen. It's Rebecca, but she lied and said it was Karen. <laughs> they, <laughs> All they I, do is lie. Kind of like uh when you're a uh a public defender, mm. it's like, well, they work with the niggas. <laughs> the <laughs> like second, they get paid no. by the same niggas. The second you, you find out your man's got a public defender, you go <laughs> see him and say, yo, I'm going to take care of your kids. I ain't <laughs> yeah. your girl. I'm going to send you some money because you going to jail, nigga. <laughs> right, right. You How going you to like jail. Have you, you got ever a public a defender? A, have you ever heard a good story of a public defender? Fuck I've, no. You going to jail. <laughs> right, right. You might complete out of jail, but you, you still going to get something. You going to see the jail. <laughs> <laughs> You gonna pay a visit, nigga. You you got a you got a PD. You going to jail? Now, uh, you know what? I I had a public defender for some dumb shit back in the day, and it was it was uh, I pleaded no contest. Mm. So, but and I didn't go to jail, but I but I couldn't, but I should have won, based on the evidence at the time. Listen, I did what I did wrong, but they mm. knowing what I know now, they could not prove it, mm. and he just kind of scared me into saying no contest. Which is essentially pleading guilty uh, to mm -hmm. me. What would you say, right? Yeah, similar. It's it's kind of when they go um when they pardon when you get a pardon, in order to accept the pardon, it's a it's an admittance of guilt. You have to say I did the shit. Let me out though. <laughs> you can't get a pardon and be innocent. 
Yeah, right. So also, is that, is that an official thing? You have to officially. If you pardoned, you did it. Right. Okay. Pardon means you was a part of this shit, but we're going to let you out. You good, but you did that shit, but you good though. Yeah, because I know Trump out here. Hey, no, you good. Hey, innocent. You, good. you can't pardon innocence. I'm innocent. I didn't do nothing. Fuck you mean I'm pardoned. See, I thought I thought it was, well, how about this? But what if you innocent, but they say, nah, you innocent, but we got you though, so. That's because you black. That's the only time that happened. <laughs> when you can't do shit, you still end up in fucking jail. Yeah. They be throwing niggas in jail like it's nepotism, nigga. Everybody gets some. Pass it down. Man, do you think it's, uh, do you think shit's getting better? Do you think this year shit is heading in a better direction or not? As um, far as the, the racial gaps and all that kind of shit. I do not know. I mean, I, I would say maybe because just the way, like, you know, linear progression or something, as time goes on and information becomes more readily available, people supposed to be smarter and we're supposed to see more. But uh, maybe because there's a lot of white angst right now. White dudes swear that they're going to lose their whole country. They They think black niggas is just waiting outside their houses just about to take their good like white people are afraid man that's and that's that's what the media sells to white people every day right the mexicans are gonna come take your job the black man gonna come take your bitch <laughs> like that that's every day <laughs> right, they're right. selling white people fear right be afraid right. that's all they tell them every fucking day but, but, but my opinion of that is, and that's absolutely true, is because of social media, and mm -hmm. then you can have the white motherfucker who ain't on that. That you know, is true. Yeah, they can start talking because I'm telling you now in Chicago, and I'm driving. You, you probably saw it in New York. There's mostly white motherfuckers out there protesting. Yeah, but but the, but that shit is that, the thing about that. It's like they're protesting, but also I found. I, these comedy shows, bro, you, you New York City, you get these mixes of people at these comedy shows. And even with the comedians, you know, you get you get a comedian that grew up in Tennessee that moved to New York and they're a liberal. You know, I'm a liberal. I'm a liberal. And it's like. <laughs> you're afraid of me. Because I don't fit into your idea of safe black. You know what I mean? Like, these are the same niggas that would be like Black Lives Matter, but see you and run. Mm. See you and flinch and feel fear. And it's like, you still don't see the humanity in me. If you are constantly in fear of me, like I'm a fucking lion, you don't see me the way you see you. So it's like, yeah, you marching or whatever, but do you believe it, nigga? Now, do I guess only that, person, only that person would truly know. So, like, for instance, my best friend, he's, he's actually, he's half Cuban, half white. Mm -hmm. But if you saw him, he's a white man. You know what I'm saying? He looks yeah. like a white person. And I'm telling you, nobody has had my back on this planet, over, even over family, Hell yeah. than, than this man. So I believe in my soul that yeah. this motherfucker looks at me as his equal. I, I, I believe that in my soul. So I do think that that is possible. It's absolutely possible. Absolutely possible. 110% I believe that without a doubt. Because to say that a blanket statement, all whites, it's it's ridiculous. Right, right. Because they tell you, on the same boat as them when they go, you're one of the good blacks. It's like, shut the fuck up, stupid. Now, yeah, that's, that's the problem. Shut up, beat the, the bitch out the good you. Black. Now, I, I, I've mentioned this on the podcast before, too. I felt like, because I grew up in a very Caucasian area. It, it was mm. more diverse than most places, but it was still, you know, it was white America, right? Yeah. And I'm a, I'm 6'2", and back in the day, I was 400 pounds. I've lost a lot of weight, but I was just a big man, you know? Yeah. You already know what they, you know, what black... Absolutely. Kids, you know, like I, so I had to almost bubble it up out of fear. Right, 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 right. He all missed the nice now, right? Yeah, Smiling, hey, yeah. everybody and high five. Right. Come here. Right, right, right. Who wants a donut? Now, here's the problem. Dumb shit. Now, here's the problem. Me today... I feel like I'm still a bubbly guy now. Is that because I actually am or is because I just, that's just what mm -hmm. I've been molded into all these years. And I that's, battle with yeah, that. I mean, I feel like shit. a nice guy, you know? Even with that, like Patrice would talk about it where he's like, 
he was talking about how like you know the the way they are on set and they come in hi and it's like seven in the morning and they're like oh my god and then you just want to sit there and be like yo what up and because you're not on the same hey they're like oh my god what's hap- what's wrong and it's like nothing i'm just a grown ass nigga that grew up a little different than you <laughs> right 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 that's it like right. this the same shit you've been talking i understand the idea of having to be bubbly and all of that to to disarm people because which i'm, is, well, I'm saying 200 it, something which is fucked up those what i'm saying like it's like absolutely man, I can't be myself out of fear of of offending Bro, you or making you yeah. for the first couple years in stand-up i like i've heard so many different like you know opinions of oh dre seems a little you know dangerous or he might snap or and it was just because I come in and I mean I'm you chilling. got that on the podcast. You got that on man school though. Like, they yeah, really- like you just chill. Like if you just chilling, bro. If you just chilling, this is enough. When you a big nigga and you just chilling, that's scary. This is enough, <laughs> right, right. to cause a problem for people. I know. I can make so people feel up. uncomfortable by just chilling, which is so fucked up. That's fucking nuts. <laughs> so fucked up. That's the insanity. It's so true. And the thing is, is they. People who don't go through that just can't comprehend, can't comprehend what that's like. For instance, Dante always talks about this too. Guys don't understand what women can have to go through. Like yeah. if, a, if a girl goes on a guy on, on a date the first time, we mm-hmm. literally could kill you. Mm-hmm. So you got to think about some shit. When I'm walking down the street, unless I'm in like a very rough area, I don't. I'm not fearful of anything. Yeah. And women, that's not I can, it's like we can't even fathom that as much as you know what I'm saying that they actually go through it. Yeah, but it's like, the same principle. I, my being- homegirl the other day said this shit. She was like, they 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 must have did some study and asked a bunch of women, what would you do if you didn't have to worry about men or some shit? And mad women was like, I would go for a walk. Wow. And it was just like, damn, women want to. It, it'll be like 9 p.m. And, you know, it's a nice fall evening and she just want to go for a walk. But she got to think, what if I turn a corner and some creep nigga standing there and now I'm going to end up in somebody's trunk? Because mm. I wanted to go for a little walk. The house was stuffy. It was nice out. I want to get me a little brisk walk. And homegirl can't even go for a walk. Right, it's fucked up. And I never have that idea. Ever. I, when I want to go but outside, my, I'm going to fuck there's outside. There's a different right. side where I go outside and I'm like, if I'm going to go for a walk, I better have my license and registration on my mm. body because people see me and see a bullet walking. Right. They just see a six foot bullet walking down the block like that shit going <laughs> like that's right. how you get. treated. So it's just it, so many people got to adjust their lens to let other people live the way they should and want to be able to live because women should be able to go for a fucking walk and I should be able to chill at 6 a.m. in the morning. Right. No, I don't. 100%. I don't need to be bubbly mm-hmm. at six a.m., bitch. I don't. That's not what I do. And sure, exactly. you want to go for a walk at ten? She should be able to go for a fucking walk. Yeah, She's it's crazy. crazy how, it's crazy how that's a that that's a that's a thing still. And it feels like that's like an American. It's like a. Like I don't a, know about that because they be wilding in India. India is known for for not having it too nice on the women's side of the town. Oh, okay, my fault. Not the women. I I mean like. I was talking about racial Us. issues. Oh. Uh, because I know, shit, like... I don't know. Because well, England, you know, black people got it hard all over the world. Remember when China right, and the Wuhan, the virus came out, they was throwing niggas outside of China. Like, <laughs> like oh, this got to be hey, your fault, Darkie. Hey, and it's like, what the they, fuck, hey, nigga? Hey, why they hate us? <laughs> I think, bro, I've been in this motherfucking room reading too much goddamn black power books. <laughs> I'm convinced, just like how I said about white people been lying to us for years, dog. Too many times you look back in history and find the origin of something, and you're like, damn, it was us that did that? And they didn't mm. tell us that it was us that did that. Even the sentiment of having docile Africans that, you know, that we needed to beg for freedom. Meanwhile, they never told you about the millions of slave revolts, hundreds across the globe. How mm. Haiti freed itself, how Jamaica had many revolts. And they don't tell you these things because if you find out that you come from people that got a spirit about them, you might feel like you got one. Right. 
You see what I'm saying? And like, they really kept these shit secret, bro. Like most of the education that I have, I did not acquire from school. On your own. School taught me that I was a slave that can't read, that needed help from this white man. It wasn't until that I started to educate myself that I found out differences about where I came from and what I am. Right. All they do is lie to us about us. Look like, at the, like, like the, the, about the establishment, you're saying. Bro, yeah, and right, and right. So before that, because when you look at the representation of the country of Africa, the, the continent of Africa on these maps, nine times out of ten, they make Africa the same size as all these other continents or smaller in representation when the fact of it is Africa is fucking massive, huge, bigger than most of these other continents. Right. They will never tell you the amount of resources that is in that country. And then if the, if the, you would think about this it's simple logic, if you come from a family in the inside of your home, you have a lot of food. You come from a home that has abundance of food. You would be able to eat. That food will show on you because it that's where you come from. Right. But what actually happens is you come from this house that has an abundance of food, but yet every fucking day, a group of white people walk into your house and take your abundance and don't let you have anything that's yours. That's what Africa is. That country belonged to Africans, to black people, melanated people. But yet China's walking in, taking shit from it. Europe walking in, taking shit from it. America walking in, taking shit from it. But yet the Africans are sitting there hungry. And y'all want to show us these fucking faces with these damn feed them 59 cents. Yeah, I was about to say, I that's all you ever see. no meal for 59 cents, nigga. Ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> what you going to give me, some Uts chips? <laughs> right. See a little African kid with a fly on his fucking face and he eating some sour cream and onion? That don't fucking happen. That's the only time you like that's and as a black man growing up, especially in this area, I that when you think of Africa, you they try to of, tell you it's some right. sad shit going yeah. on there. Meanwhile, Mud and huts. Right. Come on, son. They be doing nothing but lying out here. That's all they do is lie. I saw a clip on social media of somebody driving with a phone through Africa, like a, and it was like a legit nice fucking neighborhood. Of like course. one that's one, of the, and my point is, is and I'm and I'm saying this as a black man. Yeah, I I'm feel like, you. I never, I'm like, I've never shit. seen this shit. Yeah, I never saw that. You only Why see the bullshit. No, come on, son. You only see the boom, boom, boom. That's all you ever see. You don't all see. All they ever show you, bro. <laughs> right. That's all they ever show you, and they don't even tell you the history of that. It's well, but well, my point is, is I do believe in my heart that because of social media and because motherfuckers do have hearts, that mm -hmm. that. That I do believe more like the layers of that onion is is coming off. Maybe it's not fast enough. Yeah. Because there's a lot of motherfuckers out there fighting, losing their lives and shit. Or for, for you know what I'm saying? Like people have died. Yeah. White people have died. Absolutely. For the black cause. So like I it's definitely in a better direction for sure. Absolutely. And, I would never say that I am living the life of a black man from 1900s. Right, right. We got My it pretty fucking good, technically. Immensely better right, right, right. than right. if I was born in 1920. But that don't mean, 18. right, but that don't mean it ain't, it ain't, it's that it's equal, right. It, yeah, and like there's still things going on. Like one of the things you like you brought up the Fallon thing. I know for a fact, bro, like the, the thing about white mediocrity, how a white dude can do Frank, Frank, they can fart on the mic and get a get a deal. It's so meanwhile, true. you got you better be fucking amazing. That's true. And be That's amazing true. for mad long right. to get 17 cents. <laughs> right, right, like right. that's the shit Chris Rock was talking about where Chris Rock live in his neighborhood in New Jersey. It's Chris Rock, one of the best comedians of the ever. ever. There's Jay Z, one of the best rappers of ever. There's Mary J. Blige, one of the best songstress of ever, and some fucking dentist. dentist. <laughs> right, some right. stupid fat ass dentist. And you find out most doctors, doctors do not respect dentists. In the yeah, doctor I, world, I they that. laugh at dentists. And here comes this dickhead with his fucking bends. Right, right. Why? Because he's just some white dude. The nigga even create teeth. Nothing. Nothing. Right, right. Goofy ass dentist. Now, I'll tell you this. I, I, personally, so I was a surf, server at a restaurant. And in order to get the same benefits as some of the other top servers in the restaurant, 
Yo. I had to be superb. You the illest server. You making yeah, the right. food, serving it, serving right. niggas, giving them help. Right, you, want, right. you need salt, like rubbing their babies, all kind of shit, right. helping. I can't make Come no on, mistakes. Son. They got to enjoy me. They got to be happy. Like, oh, Chris was awesome. You know, it's got to be so over the top to get the same benefits as the other servers that I'm clearly Come overall. On, son. Right, right. That's true. I don't that give type of shit, I can't let slide. Like, I feel it already. I like I do not have it in me to allow fuckery. And that's another thing where you're saying, like, how come it not how come, but like, do you think going forward that, you know, the relationship between black and whites and other races or whatever is gonna become better? And yes, because I I'm I'm in the pocket of I'm not fucking asking y'all mm. for it to become better. Right. I'm gonna make it that way. If you don't like me, I'm running the fuck over you. That's how I feel. Like I'm I'm not the more I've realized how much deceit, how much they hiding from me, how much they lie to you about what you are, all of this type of shit, how much they lie about their own history. Mm. They don't tell us about Belgium and the hand that Belgium had in the Congo murdering millions of Africans. They don't tell us about King Leopold. They, they have you thinking it's just Hitler and Hitler ain't touching no niggas. Hitler never had beef with niggas. <laughs> there was no niggas in the camp, <laughs> no. which is a fucking lie. Bullshit. So all, all of this type of shit, I'm just not with none of it. I'm not with none of it. I'm not letting nobody slide. Y'all, whatever comics, y'all better be fucking careful with them nigga jokes to me. Make sure that shit funny, because if it's not, I might smack dick out you, boy. I might hurt you out here. Like, See, I'm just like, not with nobody playing no more. I'm just not with the bullshit. They too long of bullshit. You know, that brings me to a good point with when Kevin Hart got in trouble for making those jokes back in the day, the gay jokes, right? And tell me if this is true for somebody that does stand-up comedy, that it's a joke can be offensive as long as it's funnier than it is offensive. Yeah, like, I've definitely heard some jokes. So I'm like, nigga, that is racist as hell. But? But that shit funny. <laughs> okay, right, 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 right. And the thing that's more important, like in that circumstance, if the reason you said it is because of funny, not because it was racist, then mm. we can, I right, we can talk. Cause I am a comedian, I can hear that. Right, right, right. If, right. You, if the sole fucking purpose, and I mean the only purpose you said that shit is because it was funny, and there is no malice in your heart or mind whatsoever, then we can talk. Now, but you if ever I you, sense that there is something wrong, I might push your teeth in the back of your throat. I really might. Right, right. Do you ever get that feeling from, from comics? No, because ain't nobody ever tried me. I haven't had that. I haven't had that. Yet. No, no, no. I haven't had. You ever heard a joke that from a comic that was supposed to be funny, but it was just came off fucking racist? Oh, yeah, like at like an open mic or some yeah. stupid shit. Uh, something like I've heard a comic on stage try some shit. And I was like, that was just racist. There was no joke there. There was nothing right. there. You just said some dumb shit and you thought because you said it into a microphone under the gaze and the idea of comedy that it won't count. Like, no, That's what a lot counts, of people do. It, it counts, motherfucker. <laughs> they always be like, oh, I'm a comedian. We all are comedians. Yeah, yeah. Usually, I'm a comedian. But that time, you knew you was trying to hurt somebody. Right. You knew your goal was to hurt somebody. Your goal wasn't to be funny. I'm always down for the goal to be funny. If the goal is to be funny, and that is all, all right, we can talk. But if you got other motives, we got to do something to you. Right. You got to feel something. You got you going you got something gotta happen. You gotta get touched because you got other motives. And you lying. You lying to me, you lying to yourself, you lying to all of us, talking about oh, it was just funny. Meanwhile, you hate niggas. <laughs> right. Which don't I'm help. I'm not nobody. with none of that. I, I don't I don't say people of color. I do not include myself in people of color. And the sole reason of that is the other colors don't like me. You can't bring no black man to a Mexican household to meet the abuleta. <laughs> she be like, get that nigga out of here. <laughs> you can't bring no black man to meet your Chinese moms, your Japanese dad, your Swedish father. 
They don't like us. Indian niggas be dark as fucking India. Still don't like black people. So this yeah, ain't no people God. of color. I'm a nigga. <laughs> right. Yep, I get you, brother. It's uh, it's 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 fucked up. It's fucked up. I, I'm 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 more of an optimist. I'm an optimist, but I'm an optimist that might punch you. That's it. <laughs> there you go. Hey, uh, we get on some good time here, man. Hey, first off, I want to say shout out, shout out your 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 Instagrams, your everything, man. What you got going on? Everything is Andre D Thompson. Type out Andre D Thompson, and you will find me. That you is got, everything. Um, I I want to say like truly from the bottom of my heart, thank you for coming on. Oh hell yeah, bro! Thanks for having me on, man. Thank you for being part of one of the most influential podcasts of my life. No, no joke. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, bro. Uh, when you oh, talk God. to Harry, like, and it, you know what, before we get off, there's, there's actually a funny story. Damn, I'm not sure funny. between me, or you and Harry or whoever it was. And I followed one of you and then I followed the next one. And then we all got connected somehow. Yeah. And then I was talking to Harry and maybe you too, actually, because I was coming to New York and yeah, I bought, yeah, yeah. Remember that? Yeah. He was coming to New York at one point. And I bought and I bought a ticket to see Dante. And uh and, and everything was cool, everything worked out. We went to New York, went out there, and just so happens the show that I was going to, he switched his end time. Ah, uh. you know what I'm saying? And again, he, he gotta do what he gotta do. Like, you know, I'm just some nigga from Chicago. So I was and don't forget my, I, like that was like the biggest reason why I was going. I'm like, I gotta see it. So I was like, damn, Dante, what happened? He was like, Oh, my bad. Da, 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 da. Anyways. He gave me his number Dumb. and he hit me up. And then we talked on the phone, me and Dante for like a good 30 minutes. And, and he was like, uh, whenever we, you know, you get back to the, uh, New York and we get you right. And yeah. then, uh, then COVID happened, all that shit. But uh, I remember thinking that I remember, cause I, I was, I was so happy, but then so hurt. Mm. And not, not personally because of him. I was like, damn, like I set this up to finally meet. It's the way the comedy shows work too. They were like, they, they, if you look at a lot of times when you buy the tickets, they'll be like line up subject to change mm. because the whole industry is happening all the time. Like it's always going, it's always going down. You, like I keep your phone close. You might get a call to go down here. You might get a you know, go uptown and fucking get on a plane. Like this should work like that sometimes. So and, and when you got to go, you got to go. Yeah. Kevin, uh, Kevin Hart talks about that in his book. He goes, man, when, when you get the opportunity, you, you better be ready to go. Go shoot that shit. And uh, don't hold back at all either. Absolutely. Yeah. That's another thing. Like, that's how I, that's why I talk the way I talk now. Like, this was always there. But sometimes I would, you know, downshift. I'd be like, you know, let me not wild out all let, the let way. Me, let me clean it up a little bit. Right? Yeah, let me not give them all a Dre. Let me, let me, yeah. But it's like. That's not the truth. That's not it. There's more. So I'm gonna let that shit blend. And I'm telling all you, that's what that's what this cares done shit is. That's what that is. I'm man. letting them guns off. <laughs> wow. I'm <laughs> letting them shits fly, bro. I'm letting them shits fly. Fuck that. I survived uh, the pandemic. Or I'm letting right. it fly. Yeah, and what the fuck's fuck gonna happen? Me. Except you probably just be better off in life because I'm what I'm learning is the more authentic I am, the better life is for me. Yo, let it go, dude. Let it go, right? Uh, so like go. I said, do uh, I'm gonna be hitting up Harry here soon. Here, I, I think he'll get on. He fucks with me a little bit, and then one, after I get y'all both on, then I'm gonna go for the big fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he, yeah, he's yeah. the one. He was like the first person that you know what I'm saying. Oh, so yeah. like, I and I think he'll do it one of these days. I think he'll do it one of these days. I'm gonna get him in there. Word. Uh, uh, but again, I appreciate you, man. Thanks. I'm gonna see you soon. Yeah. And when I and when this shit pop open, open again, I'm coming to New Word. York. We gonna do something. And eventually, I'm definitely gonna come down to Chicago. Chicago got Chicago's a city for that comedy, brother. That's just a serious city right there. Oh, so and that's absolutely. another thing too. Uh, I I definitely want to do that just because it feels scary. So that's why I'm going to do it. And mm. The goal was to do it this year, and then all the craziness happened. But I want to just go up there and just feel it because everything you got to my whole thing recently is the good shit happens after the bullshit. Right. So mm -hmm. I almost I almost lean into bullshit because that's the level up. Yeah. You go know? through the fear, man. Like go through it. It was talking about being like having nerves on stage and becoming nervous to do stand up and everything. And I, I some people say that they completely remove nerves. 
and I don't right? I don't feel as though I removed any nerves. I just feel like my nerves were channeled in a different way where it wasn't that I was afraid of it. I was excited for mm. it because your right. central nervous system, it's the same system. You don't get multiple. You're you're the, these adrenalines, norepinephrine and all these things are firing off. It's going to fire off. But if you interpret it as excitement or joy mm. or you're like you just angst, you just want to get to it. It's a different feeling embodied wise versus I'm afraid of this versus, you know, the fight or flight. Mm. You can feel like you want to run from it or you want to go to it. I'm I'm up for the fight part. Right. <laughs> and it's, no and fight. It's, it's like a rep, too. It's like. And Hell the more, yeah. The more you do it, the easier it gets. And, and it's uh, like I'm, calloused hands, man. Yes, just like that. This you have adapt a nigga that worked on cars his whole life? Hands, oh, tough, focus. tough, fucking <laughs> grizzly hands. Yeah, you, you give him dap and it's then like, fuck, use lotion, nigga. <laughs> right, right. Them calluses. It like the rock. Years of work. He shows his hands. His hands is bogus, but yeah, that's how you like, get to do that, just right? Just years of work. Just constantly working. And now they can just grab that shit. You ever see your grandma <laughs> cooking and she just grabbed this shit right out the pan? Right. The, the hot, can be hot, hot oil. Frying. <laughs> Man, it don't even give a fuck. She just right. throw the hand bad, nigga. I've been doing this since '68. Yeah, I'm still using a, a, a spatula to flip my toes. Using them <laughs> dumbass tongs. <laughs> I'll, uh, I heard something from a Seth, a dude named Seth Godin, uh, marketing Yo. guru. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. You ever heard? Of, yeah, super dope. I'm trying to get my brand popping off, and Hell he goes, yeah. "You never really get rid of the fear. You just learn how to dance with it." Mm. And I was like, "That was kind of powerful." I'm dutty whining with my fear. Dutty what? Dutty whining. Me and my fear doing some freak nasty shit, nigga. <laughs> fucking out this bitch, Wait, giving it, it up crazy. <laughs> Come here, bitch. You thick, fear. Come here. <laughs> I'm getting it in. Uh, and one of these days, I'm going to get you back on, and we're going to dive more into the, these women, man, because that's something that people need to hear. Uh, I'm with it. But again, man, I appreciate you, man. We get you on next time. And let, I'm telling you, let Harry know I'm coming. I'm coming for it. All right, Brody. <laughs> All right, brother. I appreciate you, man. Gang, stay out of trouble. <laughs> Word. <laughs> All right, bro. Yeah. Word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah.